What's going on everyone? I'm back with another video. This video is going to be looking at why Brighton is the most underrated team in the Premier League, both tactically and in terms of their overall team. And before we start, check out both my books. They're online, they're on Amazon, and there's links to both of them in the description below. Also, be sure to check out Keyframe. It's how I made this video. And there'll also be a link to that in the description. So let's get right into the video. Now Brighton, when they build from the back, much unlike other newly promoted sides or relatively newly promoted sides in the Premier League, Brighton have a very progressive way of playing and they're very pro pragmatic in their buildup. So they split their goalkeeper with two central defenders, which most teams in the Premier League do, even the teams that play direct. But the connections they make through the midfield third using their double pivot is oftentimes used to exploit the free player in the wide area or better yet in central position. So we see our asymmetric midfield three will often be joined by a player occupying the number 10 position and another attacking midfielder through the half space creating this diamond. So these five points will be key reference points throughout Brighton's positional play attack. And what's so unique about Brighton is that not only can they create a free player, build from the back, but they are also well equipped to go forward and try to do so systematically. So as we see it in the game versus Liverpool, with Liverpool's front three, they did get caught out once that almost led to a Mane goal, but they were let off the hook by a handball. And with Liverpool pressing, with their front three and their two advanced midfielders, this put a high deal of pressure on Brighton and their first and second line of buildup, as well as jumping fullbacks from Liverpool, committed a lot of opponents in the defensive phase for Liverpool to pressing the Brighton's first and second line of buildup. So this opened up the scenario for them to be able and go long and potentially have a better chance at winning the second ball, which they were comfortable in doing. Now often, now obviously when Brighton did go long and they targeted players like Van Dyke and Konate, they did have a tough time winning the first ball, but it's not so much about the first ball. If these two central defenders win the ball, more often than not, it'll be headed forward back into the midfield. Players where their advanced midfielders occupy the central three corridors and have a good position to set up and win the second ball via positional superiority. So don't pay as much attention to the individual duels, but rather the second individual duels and the play after the initial contest. But moving into the midfield third, we then see Brighton go with a two central defender buildup with two holding midfielders in front of them. So this 2-2 two -two buildup gives them flexibility and is very popular in the Premier League among, among many teams. The width is created through the fullbacks, which allows the wide midfielders and their number 10 to occupy these central corridors. And what's very special about this is they also have their forward or a more advanced player, which they can then drop deeper to attract pressure to these positions and try and get a Liverpool central defender to jump and exploit space in behind. So from here, against Liverpool's 4-3-3, we have each of the Brighton midfielders taken out of play by a cover shot shadow. And a high level of compactness from Liverpool means there's very little space through central corridors to then try and progress through. And this is due to the wide pressing trap Liverpool has set, which Brighton are set up to actually play into the pressing trap of Liverpool through their wide connections of their fullback and their central defender. So an increase in pass distance means there's more time for the defense to recover and press into the wide area. But this can often be solved through the double pivot, dropping into the half space, decreasing the passing distance and then manipulating the midfield and front three of Liverpool. But in the case that Brighton don't have the ability to play through the midfield third, they have their movement ahead of the ball to try and bail them out. So oftentimes with so many players between the lines in advanced positions, it will often spark a central defender to dr jump to then try and occupy one of these players, which will then create space in behind to set up a more direct route. And this co often comes from a positional interchange with the forward dropping deeper, one of the central defenders following him, and then a weak side blind side run in behind, taking advantage of the space. And now we can start to see the benefit of the fullbacks as we just saw a potential transitional threat from Liverpool when Brighton used their 
wide fullbacks, but now we see the distance is easy, even greater between central defender and fullback, but this can be exploited because of the narrowing of the midfield three of Liverpool, and now the overstretched positioning of the Liverpool defense and over compactness through the central corridors of the field, allowing then the fullback to then progress on and become the free player. This comes from inverted movements of the wide midfielder and then the highest player from Brighton as well. So these players moving inward, even into the central corridor, almost vacating the half space altogether, pushes Trent Alexander-Arnold into a deeper position and by the Brighton attacking midfield three playing between and outside shoulders of the Liverpool midfielders causes them to be narrow trying to split access between these players causing a very narrow defensive shape for Liverpool and allowing the fullback of Brighton to progress on in vacant space as players of Brighton move against circulation of the ball to then free up the vacated wide area. So now it's not just in possession I feel Brighton are the most underrated team, but a big part of their success in the Premier League this season so far and still yet to come will be their versatility in their defensive phase and how this relates to their transition. So Brighton started the match with a 4-4-2 with two forwards staggering themselves to create access against the two central defenders of Liverpool and the holding midfielder's position as well. Then from here we have a staggering midfield shape often used to create better access between the lines against a very fluid Liverpool attacking midfielder and front three that often use these positions, especially Roberto Firmino. So by having a staggered midfield four gives them good access across the field to the wide areas as well as putting players closer to a player like Roberto Firmino between the lines. Then as the ball goes into the wide area, moving into Brighton's own half now, we see a less staggered shape but a more compact shape because of the deeper positioning. So with more compactness, there's less need to stagger the players in the same line and the back four becomes very narrow, allowing the midfield four to span across the full width of the field. And with the back four becoming more, very narrow, space does open up through the wide area which is which is acceptable for Brighton because these areas are the least dangerous as Liverpool will need to play away from goal to penetrate these areas and oftentimes they'll be penetrated through these areas from outward movement of the front three giving them poor field of view arriving from a more central position and these areas are the easiest to shift across to the simplest shifting is required and they have the most time to do so when brighton maintain their compactness they open up circulation patterns for Liverpool, which could then be an avenue Brighton could use to get out of their defensive third or their mid block to then be a more proactive side and exploit the vast amount of space and teams build up connections when they do reach more progressive more advanced points in the team and with two forwards they easily have players who can jump into these positions while still having adequate cover and spatial compactness between the lines controlling the most dangerous space and creating access to the lesser of the dangerous spaces in the low block for brighton when things get a little more dangerous, they can also switch to a 5-3-2, which sees a wide midfielder dropping into a wing-back position and securing up the central corridor, allowing more players to shift across the field to the ball side to deal with overloads around the ball, as Liverpool have done here. With Brighton shifting across, dealing with this Liverpool overload, we still have the ability for players to mark on the weak side where dangerous runs could be made through the blind side. So with the wing back and the weak side wide midfielder playing through the center, they still have cover in central positions where crosses could be dangerous if they didn't have this added flexibility from a five-man back line, allowing them to span across a longer distance. Now the biggest thing in this match was when Brighton did have to chase the game, they did get lucky on a few chances, a few calls, but they did have a few big chances they also missed. So the biggest change for me was when they switched to a 4-3-1-2 or a 4-3-2-1, which saw a three-man midfield and a back four and gave them more pressure in the first and second line of Liverpool's buildup. So with the two forwards 
and the single number 10, we then had a much more proactive way to transition. And although it made them a little more susceptible deeper, it gave them a higher probability to create chances in transition. So with this diamond shape, they had a clear focal point and a transition that could isolate central defenders and span across both half spaces. So as we see, when they win it, they have the triangle, they have the triangle shape that help them transition and isolate central defenders across both half spaces and they could manipulate the positioning of these players by either fanning out wide or making runs narrow if the space was there to be exploited. And these are just a few ways Brighton use adaptability to become the most underrated team in the Premier League and I think they'll continue to have success and keep creeping up the table and finish in the top eight somewhere depending on the form of the other sides. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.